Hey, Daily Dosers. We are still in the book of 1 Peter, trying to walk through what is this understanding that this man Peter had of who Jesus was, of what his mission was, and how we're supposed to live it out in response to that. 1 Peter chapter 1, picking up in verse 22, says this. Now that you have purified yourselves, not anything that you did, because it's going to give a reference here, by obeying the truth. So the obedience to truth is how we purify ourselves. When we try to do it on our own, it leads to pride, self-righteousness. Those are the very things that Jesus came to destroy. He announced an end to religion, and purifying ourselves was all about religion. We have now become purified by obeying the truth so that you have now sincere love for each other. Love one another deeply from the heart. He gives us qualifications. It says, love each other, but do it sincerely, deeply, and from the heart. For you have been born again. So it doesn't say, I want you to love each other sincerely, deeply, and from the heart because people deserve it, or because you're capable of it on your own, or because that's the way that everyone treats you. It gives us a motivation. It says, because you've been born again. Not of perishable seed, so it's it's not your literal birth, but of imper- imperishable seed, that is, through the living and enduring word of God. So we've been made new because of these scriptures, because of this word of God. It says all people are like grass. So like putting all your faith in your dad or your mom or your parents, that, that, that's pointless because they're going to wither away and they're going to fade. And all their glory is like the flowers of the field, here today and gone tomorrow. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But when we put our faith or a reason behind loving and where we came from in our rebirth, the word of the Lord, verse 25, the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. I love this little triplet here in the middle of this phrase. I want you to love each other, Peter says, who is asked three times at the end of his life by Jesus. Do you love me, Peter? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And Jesus says, surely, Lord, I love you. What? Why do you keep asking me that? And Jesus' response is, oh, would you feed my sheep? Would you love them too? And now here's Peter turning around, having been given that command, having been given that call, and he writes to us as his new listeners. Would you love each other sincerely? Would you love each other deeply? And would you love from the heart? It's almost this this cool illustration of the questions he's been asked. I love this word, sincere. The word sincere, uh, it actually comes from two words, mean sincere, and sin means without. Think of the word sans, like uh, sans something, without something. That's what that word means. Sin and sere means wax. The idea is when, when you used to, if you were a potter, you might make something out of clay, and you would sell it to someone sincerely, which means you did such a good job making and molding and sculpting and in the kiln with that pot that it, it, there was nothing fake about it. See, if you accidentally cracked it, you'd have to use wax to repair it. And then that jar just wasn't as, uh, it wasn't as intent on holding things. It didn't serve its job quite as well. But if you were a master potter, all of your pots would be sincere. They'd be without wax. There's nothing fake about them. They would hold the weight that they were supposed to hold. And that's the call for the Christian to love one another, to do it without wax. In other words, don't have an agenda. Don't be fake. Don't love someone because they're your special project for the year. We've gotten such a bad reputation for doing that. But instead, we are called to love people because we've been loved, not because they deserve it or because they're the people we're trying to win over for Jesus and they're our special project. What would it look like for the church to love people just because we've been loved without wax, that we love then sincerely and without wax to the deepest part of who we are, deeply, and from the heart, from the gut, from the seat of what we believe is to be true. Because of why? Because of his enduring word and the resurrection that gives us new hope. If you've got people in your life and you feel like your love has wax, it's got an agenda to it, I can almost guarantee you they can feel that. What does it mean today? to turn around and love them, not because they deserve it, not because they're worth it, not because they profit you something, but to swallow deep the pride that we have and to say, because of how he's loved me, I want to love you without wax. That's how we've been called to love. We'll see you guys tomorrow.